Sharpening is a really important part of your photographic workflow, and there are a lot of ways to sharpen in Photoshop. I want to show you the best ways to sharpen and a few things you ought to know about when sharpening your images. The first thing I want to do is take this image through Camera Raw. Now, if you're in Photoshop CC, you can do that by coming right in here to Camera Raw Filters. If not, your RAW files will automatically go into Camera Raw, or you can train JPEGs and TIFFs to open into Camera Raw by changing your preference in Photoshop's file handling. Within Camera Raw, I've got all sorts of controls, and one of those is sharpening. Now, anytime I'm sharpening, I want to make sure that I zoom in to at least 100%. In this case, I'm going to go to 200%. And I've got some familiar sliders here. If you've ever used Unsharp Mask, this works a lot like that. Like Unsharp Mask, if you use this aggressively, you will start to create artifacts. And you can control those to some degree with the detail slider here. It's kind of similar to the threshold slider. Now, one thing that you can do in Camera Raw and Lightroom that's unique to this workflow is this masking slider. Now, if I just pull this, it's not really clear what's happening. But if I hold the Option or Alt key while pulling this, white shows me that everything is being sharpened. But as I pull this over, I'm building a sharpening mask. This is really a neat function. You can see that if I pull it way over to the right, all those black areas are not sharpened. So only the text is going to be sharpened. So if I toggle my preview here, I can see that I'm just sharpening around the lines and the text. Of course, the shortcoming here is that it does create artifacts when you use it aggressively. So I would only sharpen a little bit in Camera Raw. For more aggressive sharpening, you want to use Photoshop. So let's cancel out of this, and we'll come back to our image. And again, let's just double click on our Zoom tool to come into 100%. And we're going to come up here to our filter menu. Now, there are a lot of different ways to sharpen. We're just going to focus on not using one and making sure that we use another. But before we do that, let's convert to Smart Filters. That's essentially a filter layer. I can go back and change the properties after the fact. I can edit my sharpening afterwards. So in the Filter menu here, let's first look at a really common way to sharpen, but one that I'm not going to recommend, and that's Unsharp Mask. This has been in here forever. It works really well. It's very similar to what we just did. In Camera Raw, you can see that we can sharpen here, but as soon as we get aggressive, we're going to pick up a bunch of artifacts. It's got a funny name. A lot of people know about it. A lot of people use it, but there is a better way to do this. So let's cancel out of that and come in here to Smart Sharpen. We can do a lot of unique things with Smart Sharpen. I can zoom in closer. I've got a nice preview here. We can have our image at 100% and our preview here at 200%. I want to set this to Lens Blur. And I can see that even if I aggressively sharpen, because I've got this Reduce Noise slider, I get all those artifacts I got before, but I can wash those away using Reduce Noise. Now, let's say I committed this. And obviously, this is way too crunchy and way too sharpened. The benefit to using a smart filter is that I can change that after the fact. So if I go and print this, and I find that's way too crunchy, I can just come in here, double click, revisit this dialog, turn it down, make any adjustments I need to make, and click OK when I'm done. So the thing to remember about sharpening is know where you want to sharpen, and less is more with sharpening. Try not to overdo it. But the truth is, if you're using a smart filter workflow, you can always change the parameters after the fact. So if you're going to the web, if you're going to print, you can make it just the way it ought to look.